Welcome back, everyone. This is Issues and Debates. Today, we'll be looking at nature versus nurture. As always, here's a short overview of today's lesson. First, we'll be looking at the interactionist approach, then something called the diathesis stress model. Then we're going to talk about something called epigenetics, how that relates to something called concordance and heritability. We're going to look at a study to understand heritability a little bit better. Then when we talk about a historic event called the Dutch hunger winter, and then some real, real world applications of, um, of epigenetics um, and a general better understanding of genetics to help people. So first, let's define these two words a little bit better so that we really have a good foundation to understand the rest of the lesson. So nature refers to the genetic impact on human characteristics. If you were to, for example, look at intelligence, a certain percentage of your intelligence is due to your genetics, or some of your personality is, for example, due to your genes. In contrast, nurture refers to the environmental impacts on human characteristics. So nothing you were born with, like your genes, but how the environment affects you. For example, the types of parents you have, the types of friends you have, whether you are uh, born into wealth or poverty, in the type of culture you grow up in, all these things have an effect on how you behave as a human being. Now, instead of arguing which one's right or wrong, the interactionist approach says actually both have an impact. It's both. So genetics play a role and the environment plays a role as well. And that makes so much sense to me. I don't think we have to talk much about that, right? And it's obvious that we have to combine these two factors. Now, the diathesis stress model is an interesting one because it argues that genes can be dormant and only activated by certain events. And we're going to see how that plays out in multiple examples in this lesson. An example, the first one that I want to mention is OCD. So it might be, as an example, that you carry a gene that makes you more um, likely to get OCD in your life. Okay, but only a certain experience, so an, a nurture factor, yeah, like a traumatic experience could activate that gene, right? Just because you have a gene doesn't mean it has to, uh, that it is active. And that is the idea behind epigenetics. The idea here is that your genetic activity, so whether you're an, a gene that does a certain thing, turns on or off, so genes can be turned on and off, whether a gene is turned on and off depends on the environment. So the way you behave in the real world, the experiences you have change the activity of your genes. Okay, so let's go back to this. Imagine you carry a gene that makes you more likely to develop OCD. Okay, now you grow up, you're maybe 10 years old, 15 years old, and you don't have OCD. But then some traumatic experiences hap experience happens to you, well, and that causes you to develop OCD, right? That gene that you had now turns on, okay? So that, let's relate that back to the interactionist approach. It's saying that you have a genetic component, your OCD gene, but it, you also have an environmental component, and they play together. Let's take a few minutes to understand the words concordance and heritability. Concordance is mainly used in twin research and refers to the correlation between two individuals, usually on a genetic level. So the concordance between identical twins would be 1.0, which is 100%, and the concordance between two regular siblings is 0 0.5, which is 50%. Okay? Now, that is on a one-to-one on a -one or a comparison, usually. Um, heritability, on the other hand, is more more population related um, or larger sample related and it refers to how much of the characteristics that you have or um, are can be explained to, to genes so an example with that for that would be that for example 50 percent of your iq is determined by your genes that would be a statement about the heritability of iq the re enwaltman study from 2002 is a analysis looking at how much of 
um, your genes or your environment contribute to your level of aggression, your natural level of aggression. Okay, And they found that 41% of the aggression can be explained by the genes you carry, so your nature. Okay, And then vice versa, 59% would be explained by your environment, your nurture, your parents, your family, uh, your, your family and your friends. Okay, That's a great um, support for the interactionist approach. Um, showing that it's nearly half-half here, that both can influence you quite significantly. The counterpoint to this is something called niche picking. The idea here being is, suppose a kid is adopted into a family that is very aggress aggression or pacifist or doesn't have a lot of aggression or doesn't show a lot of aggression, but the kid carries the genetic um, factors that make that kid naturally more predisposed to aggression. They might seek out friends that also are more naturally predisposed to aggression, right? And so because kids can choose their environment, so nurture can be changed, that means that when we are measuring the effect of nature and nurture on, on aggression, we're not really getting accurate data because um, we can't control for the environment that these kids will choose, you see? Let's look at the Dutch hunger winter and relate that to epigenetics and the interactionist approach. So in 1944, Nazi Germany cut off food supplies to the Netherlands and 20,000 people died of starvation. And women that were pregnant during that time gave birth to babies that were twice as likely to suffer from schizophrenia. Okay? The conclusion is life experiences from previous generations can have an impact on future generations. Let's recap. These kids that were born with a higher chance of developing schizophrenia, they never experienced starvation. They, the mothers were the ones that experienced starvation and they passed on that experience in form of genetics, in form of epigenetics, to their offsprings, which is fascinating. I mean, the idea that the experiences of your parents impact your, uh, the child so the child is being affected by an event that they never had experienced. Okay, that is that is was a groundbreaking idea when epigenetics first discovered these kinds of things. Okay, so here again, the art interactionist approach would say, yeah, sure, you have genes, but they only get activated by a certain event. So in this case, even cross generational events can have an impact. Now. Knowing how much your nature and your nurture contributes to, for example, a certain disease like OCD, that is very helpful to know. For example, if you were to know that OCD has a heritability rate of 76%, meaning 76% of your OCD can be explained by the genes you carry, it would mean that we could screen people for um, for their genes and figure out if they are likely going to develop OCD. And if we know that, we can manage or even prevent the disorder from ever happening if we know it early enough and do the screening. So having that breakdown of how much of a certain disease is due to the environment and how much is due to nature allows us to effectively treat people early on. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we drop a new video. Download these and many more slides for free and consider supporting us on Patreon and get access to detailed mind maps and past exam revision content. If you're a teacher, get free access to ZenTeach, an online quizzing tool with ready-to-go, multiple-choice quizzes and automated feedback. Make sure to use this invite code, which is, like all links, in the video description below. Mm -hmm.